CTE Pro 1 Truth Series Video 9. We're going to take a look at a single 15 inside alignment. But before we get started with today's lesson, I want to revisit our alignment for Video 8, the 15 outside. I just want to make a couple of comments. How Hool once stated that there can be no doubt when you see a perception. And that is absolutely true. When I look at this 15 outside, and then I step the cue ball, it gives me an objective shot line. It gives me the shot line as an overcut for pocketing that ball. There can be no doubt. Now, what needs to be said with the idea of there can be no doubt is that CTE is a professional aiming system and in order to get to the level to where you can see a perception and there can be no doubt you must put some building blocks in place so no one is going to come through the door and automatically start knowing perceptions after after a day or so. That's going to take some work. You know, anything that's worthwhile does take work. This is a professional aiming system. I do also want to make a comment concerning this 15 degree uh, perception in relation to that pocket that a 30 degree sight line will not make that 15 outside. Years ago, CTE was portrayed as being a one sight line system. The sight line for the 30 will not make that ball. So, if I were to set up edge to B, center to edge for my 30, and step the cue ball to the outside, the best I can do with that ball is hit it thin of the pocket. So I, I just wanted to touch on that one concept. And while we're at it, I would like to advance the idea that this shot can be made with a strong emphasis on center and the outer edge, not to be confused with center to edge, as in the 30 degree perception. In other words, the center that I'm talking about is the step to center. The 15 degree perception is still there. The lines of the 15 degree perception are still there. It's just that a player with advanced skills can go directly to the stepped center and you can do that by gearing the cue ball to the inside and the object ball to the outside. So my emphasis was on the stepped center and the rotational tick for the outside of the object ball. So, what happened, or what happens for that alignment, don't pay any attention to what you see back here. Uh, I'm looking at ABC on the front side of this object ball. So what happens is I'm going directly to the step center. But while I'm doing that, I'm gearing the ticks on the cue ball so that they're aligned with the rotational ticks on the object ball. So these ticks are gearing to the inside. These ticks are gearing to the outside. I'm focusing on this outer edge the rotational tick for this outer edge. When this tick is in place, and I know that it is in place, when the 15 degree perception has emerged. So, 
I still have the sight line. I'm still at parallax inside cue ball uh, quarter to object ball core and the aim line is still geared. So all of that is accessible to me should I choose to direct my focus in that manner. So that 15 outside, center and edge. I'm giving you some very advanced information in the truth series. You obviously will get a lot of advanced information in the book. Not every single thing that I say in the truth series will appear in the book and likewise not everything that is presented in the book will appear in the truth series. Together my truth series and book represent the very, very best of information concerning center to edge aiming. Let's take a look at today's cue ball object ball placement. The cue ball for 15 inside is in the same position as it was in video 8 for 15 outside, six and a quarter inches off the rail, half a diamond. The object ball for our 15 inside is three quarters of a diamond to the right of this diamond and one cube of chalk off the rail. Yesterday's ball for the 15 outside was one half diamond to the right. So this object ball is a quarter diamond further to the right. We've already identified this cue ball object ball relationship to that right angle as an inside. So how do we determine that it's an inside? Think about your lesson that, that, that was in video 8. My primary line for determining thick and thin is the sight line. So I line up with my 15 degree perception, so I'm at parallax, I look down the sight line and I just ask myself, if I were to shoot down that line, where would the object ball go? It would track thick to the pocket. A thick alignment to the pocket needs an inside pivot for correcting the object ball path to be a slight overcut to center pocket. So. We're going to be working with an inside, inside pivot. For Pro 1, we're going to be calling that inside pivot a Pro 1 uh, right to left visual sweep or a Pro 1 right sweep. So think back to yesterday. I'm moving the ball back to the 15 outside position. And my physical movement was a very prominent left rotation. Today's physical movement will not have that very prominent left rotation into the missile. Today's movement to arrive at the inside alignment will be a bending to the right. Now keep in mind that it's for this shot, it's my left eye that is dominant for sighting and for stepping. So what I'm going to be sweeping to with my right visual sweep is to my own personal favorite line of sight that I can use conventionally, which is just slightly to the right of my nose. So when I set up with my 15 degree perception, my cue's out to the right, to the left, sorry, it'll be coming in from left to right, I'm going, to, I'm going to bend over to the right, my stance is going to widen, my visual sweep is going to occur because what is dominant at ball address for seeing the nissel and the sight line 
is going to sweep over to my favorite alignment for aligning to the missile. Now when I say my favorite alignment, for conventional aiming. So, Pro-1 is a hybrid system. Parallax vision during a ball address while you're standing and conventional vision. Notice that my head is going to unangle. Conventional vision during full stance. So, that's a right visual sweep. Now, what is it that I sweep to? I'm going to sweep to the nissle. So I have to step the cue ball while I'm standing. So there's my 15 degree perception. It's thick to the pocket. I need to thin up that thick look that I have between the cue ball and the object ball in relation to that pocket. So I'm going to step the cue ball to the inside in relation to the object ball. So I'm going to peek over, look at the outermost edge for the right half of the cue ball, which will allow me to take the sight line center and turn it so that it will be from right to left. Yesterday, or in video 8, we turned this uh, sight line center to be thicker from left to right. Today, for this uh, inside sweep, I need to sweep to this nissle that is right to left. So I'm going to see that line while I'm standing that's what I'm going to sweep to. So, I'm going to build my body around my vision. So, I'm going to let my vision pick out the most efficient place for my body to stand so that it can move easily in the full stance. So, here comes the right sweep. My stance widens. And then... That's sort of a slow motion look at what occurs for that right visual sweep. So for Pro 1, for this right visual sweep, it was parallax while standing and conventional vision for full stance. Let's take a look at basic CTE for this inside alignment. Basic CTE is the manual pivoting version. What is so wonderful about basic CTE is that with work it will teach you, it will facilitate your ability to see two centers in full stance. And the best way to do that is by having your cue out of the way when you're in full stance. That's what the angling of the front end of your cue will do for you so beautifully with basic CTE. You'll get your cue out of the, out of the way so your eyes can work. Think about Pro 1. Where's my cue? It's out of the way so my eyes can work. For manual pivoting, when the cue is angled away from center, it's out of the way so your eyes can work. Okay, I need, a, I, I need an inside pivot here. Thin is in. So, when I see my perception while standing, I will not step the ball for basic CTE. I will do that when I'm standing at the closest source to the shot. So when I'm looking at my 15 degree perception for this inside alignment, I'm going to, I'm going to guide down 
by way of parallax in such a way that I can place my bridge V and Q to be about one half of a tip to the inside. So that one half tip placement to the inside is like the most optimal position you can have for your bridge V so that you can easily tweak your bridge V to be on the Nissel center. So here we go. There is no visual sweep for basic CTE. My, my goal is to go straight into the shot line by placing my Q and bridge V to the inside. There's no visual sweep. That's for Pro 1. Uh, when I move in for basic CTE, what is a very comfortable head position here will turn into a noticeable shift with your head so that you can continue to see the perfect perception by way of parallax. The closer you get to that cue ball, the more that head's going to turn. The more your vision needs to be shifted or coiled to the right. Now, another really strong aspect or characteristic of basic CTE is that it teaches you to gear the balls when you're in full stance. In Pro 1, you have to do all your gearing up here. So, by learning basic CTE, you're on your way to being able to gear, re-gear the balls when you're in full stance because you may need to tweak. In fact, quite often you'll need to tweak. So, you, you, that, that re-gearing allows you the ability to perfectly tweak back to the uh, perfect perception for the visual, in this case, the 15. So, there's my 15 degree perception. And I'm going to look at the sight line, which is centered to left object ball, SB15. I'm going to come down to the inside. I'm going to come down to the inside. I want to see the perfect perception, and as I pick up on that perfect perception, I'm already stepping the cue ball to the right, to the inside. I'm peeking at the innermost, the outermost edge for the inside of this cue ball. So I'm already beginning to tweak my bridge V to be on the step to center. As I go down, I'm looking for the sight line. I want the perfect perception. What does the perfect perception do for me? It means that the cue ball, right cue ball edge, has been dialed in, geared in, to be aligned to object ball C, angle. So, now, there's the perfect perception. Step the cue ball. My bridge V is on the stepped center as it extends back. So all that's left is a pivot to center. See the perfect perception, step the cue ball, place my bridge V on the extended step center backward, pivot to center. My arm is in the out position in relation to my body. And that's a very detailed look at an inside pivot for this 15 uh, inside alignment. Disguise pivoting is just a very natural evolution of working with basic CTE a lot. A very important distinction between basic CTE and disguise pivoting is that for basic CTE, you pick up the sight line first and, and then you the step center. For disguise pivoting, I'm going to pick up the step center and then the sight line second. The sight line is in the background. Now when I say the sight line, 
I'm picking up that sight line, more specifically the one tick that represents SP15. When I look at that one tick and it's in the right position, the object ball has been correctly rotated. The ticks are correctly rotated. Everything's in place at that point. Foundationally, right cue ball edge to C is intact. I must be from the parallax. I must be at parallax if I can see the perfect except, uh, perception. And then, of course, the uh, SP15 tick is in place. Now, if I wanted to look over at the outer edge of the object ball, it wouldn't change the perception for me. It wouldn't change the 15 degree perception. It's not going to turn it into a 30 degree perception because the outer edge for this object ball is rotated to be in a position so that the 15 degree perception is recognizable, identifiable. So, every now and then just glance over at the uh, outer edge of the object ball. That rotation will tick for the outer edge. It just, it, it's just going to build it's just going to build your skills to where you can use a wide scope of your vision from your left eye all the way to your right eye or vice versa. So there's a lot of information available to you when you align from parallax. At full stance you have a lot of information at your, at your fingertips so to speak. So when you use parallax in full stance, you have all that same information available, available to you, except you're at the closest source to the shot. Now, disguise pivoting is just like basic CTE. There is no visual sweep. Every now and then you'll feel a, a, a physical sweep that, that will match what you do in Pro 1. Yeah, you, you, you might feel this movement or you might feel the bend to the right in this case. You might feel it, but your head as you're going to full stance is coiling. It's not unangling for conventional vision. It's coiling and coiling further, uh, further to the right so that you can maintain parallax for seeing the perfect perception. Okay, let's look at the disguise pivot. So, there's my 15 degree perception. So as I go down, there's going to be a very deliberate coordinating of my head to the right. That, that I, I love to coordinate my coil to the right with the gearing of the cue ball to the inside and the rotation of the object ball, uh, rotational ticks to the, to the outside. I love doing that, so pay attention to my head as I go down, and you can see a very slow coiling of my head to the right. So there's my perfect perception. I've already stepped the cue ball. I'm just going right down on the, going right down on the nissle. My arm's going to be in the out position. So as I go down, my head's just slightly turning to the right, gearing, gearing. So there's my, now I'm going to re-gear a little bit. So there's the perfect gearing, so everything's re-established. My hand's in the out position, and then from there, I stroke down the line. So there's a very solid look at the skies pivoting. My goal is to make these uh, next few videos shorter than video uh, eight. I've said a lot of the information already, so I don't want to be in a uh, situation where I'm repeating myself any more than I have to. Let's take a look at half ball pivoting. Half ball pivoting is a is a beauty. Uh, the half ball pivoting is Dave Siegel's. Uh, uh, preferred method of using CTE. 
in no way does that uh, mean that the foundation for the shot is not there. It certainly is. All of these lines, all this information is still there. So in order to effectively apply a half ball pivot, then you have to be well grounded in the building blocks. Now there's a couple of ways to look at this half ball pivoting shot that I'll share with you. One is from the basic CTE perspective. It's essentially the same thing as basic CTE for this first approach that I'm going to show you because I'm going to consciously seek to place my bridge V to the inside of the sideline, step the cue ball. But here's where the difference really comes and shows up for half ball pivoting. In basic CTE, the pivot came from right to left. It came from the inside. Well, a characteristic of half ball pivoting is that for a right-handed player, the pivot is always going to be from left to right. And for this shot too. Even though technically, foundationally, the pivot comes from the inside right to left, for the half ball pivot, it's always going to come from left to right, starting at about the uh, left edge of the cue ball, somewhere around. It doesn't have to be perfectly at the edge of the cue ball, just close. In other words, you're just really getting your cue out of the way so that you have this most wonderful view of the cue ball and the object ball. In other words, your eyes are free to work without any uh, distraction of your cue being uh, uh, in a position to interfere. So, for this basic CTE uh, look, everything is really the same. I just start off foundationally with right edge to C. That's the secret to the whole shot. Three by three aim lines make all shots. Right edge to C here is the secret. So, I'm going to go down. There's a couple things going to be on my mind all at once. I'm going to be angling my cue out here so that my tip is at the left edge of the cue ball. I'm going to be placing my bridge V to the inside of the sight line and I'm going to be starting the stepping process immediately. Your vis my visual intelligence, your visual intelligence works at computer-like speeds faster than feel. So, here we go. Two or three things Two or three things on my mind here as I move into this shot. I'm going to push my I'm going to push my cue out so that my tip is at the left edge of the cue ball. My bridge V is going to go to the inside of the sight line. I'm going to look at the right inside outermost edge of the cue ball. Step the cue ball. Tweak my bridge V to be on that step line as it extends backwards. As it extends backward. Now. I just pivot to that sight line, not sight line, to the missile. It's, it, it, it's a little bit complicated, maybe a lot complicated at first, but I, I wouldn't even consider putting half ball pivoting or disguise pivoting uh, on your menu until many, many, many moons down the road. You want to start off working with Pro 1 and Basic CTE, I don't care which order. But you want to get a very good grounding with both of those before you naturally uh, move on. And you'll want to try all this out. And I encourage you to try it all out. It's fun. Okay, one more time for this Basic CTE. Uh, a, a, approach for applying half ball pivoting. I'm going to start off with the with the mother of all lines, right cue ball edge to C. So I go down. I'm going to angle my cue so that my left uh, so the left so that my tips at the left edge of the cue ball. I'm making sure my bridge V is to the inside of the sight line. I step the cue ball. Tweak my bridge V to be on the step line. 
I pivot to center, and la la. I've got a pretty good entry into the pocket. Now, another flavor for applying a half ball pivot to this 15 inside alignment is to take a look at your building blocks and extract the gearing aspect out of it for being your major emphasis. So, I'm just going to line up in my 15. It's natural. After you put time in with uh, CTE, you're naturally going to line up right edge to C. So as I go down, I'm going to I'm going to focus on going directly to the nissle, not with my tip. My tip's still going to be angled to the left. So when I say directly to the nissle, that means my bridge V is going to go directly to the nissle. And what I'm going to be really focused on is the inside of the cue ball gearing in relation to the object ball gearing to the outside. So I'm basically, basically going to be looking at the inside edge of the cue ball and the outside edge of the object ball. I want to get that object ball geared in the perfect position for a 15 degree perception. My awareness of that 15 degree perception can be very, very low level. I know it's a 15, whether I'm down there thinking 15 or not. I know it's a 15. Um, so, here we go. Half ball pivoting with gearing as the driving force. There's my, there's my gearing, everything looks good. So once again, once again, we've taken a single alignment and gone through uh, four CTE approaches for applying the very same CTE. I, I, I'm thrilled to be able to give you the nuts and the bolts of CTE. It's been a long time coming. Tomorrow we're going to take a look at a single alignment. I say tomorrow, the next video. Uh, we're going to take a look at a single alignment for a 30 outside. Once again, thank you for your interest in my work. Uh, see you in video 9. I said see you in video 9. I see this was video 8. Now this, is, this was 9, so I'll see you in video 10.